help Malaysia City volunteers hold two night of great love events at Kuantan and Tamalor. In Taiwan, graduating students at Xisan Elementary School in Taipei are going on a 500km cycling tour. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. We kick off today's program in Taiwan to make sure the Taipei City Hospital will pass the upcoming evaluation. Medical staff sees every opportunity to rehearse as they hope to present exceptional performance. Meanwhile, Roland Hospital volunteers also decorated the surrounding environment in hopes of infusing it with city's humanistic spirit. Making sure the surgical mask and equipment in the emergency room are within the expiry date, medical staff at the Taipei City Hospital are doing a final checkup before the hospital assessment the following day. We look through different departments to make sure the evaluation will run smoothly tomorrow. We also visited our medical staff to give them our encouragement and tell them not to worry. I want to express my gratitude to all the medical staff for seizing every opportunity to prepare for the upcoming hospital assessment. Other than preparation by hospital staff, hospital volunteers also arrive early to decorate the place with flowers as they hope to lighten up the atmosphere. We hope these decorations will help increase the hospital's overall value. With medical staff and volunteers working hand in hand, the upcoming hospital assessment is sure to be a success. Also in Taiwan, an incident occurred in Shouling Township, Hualien County on July 15th, where a seven-year-old boy accidentally fell at home and suffered bone fracture as well as severe bleeding. As the boy lives in a remote mountain area where it lacks telecommunication and transportation, his grandmother couldn't call for help right away. Although she walked two kilometers to seek help, the boy unfortunately passed away after arriving at the hospital. Upon learning of the accident, city volunteers volunteers arrived to offer their condolences to the bereaved family. Grieving for her deceased grandson, the grandma is bereaved with sorrow. Upon learning of the family's loss, city volunteers soon arrived to offer the much needed emotional support. You have done your best. You are a responsible grandmother. It's not an easy task to look after several grandchildren on your own. The senior seven-year-old grandson fell from the top of a closet, leaving him with bone fractures and excessive bleeding. However, the grandma was unable to seek immediate assistance because where they live lacks telecommunication and transportation. Thus, she carried a boy and walked two kilometers down the mountain to seek help. Unfortunately, the boy passed away upon arrival at the hospital. We will visit her more often to provide her with emotional support and help her get through this difficult time. As her husband and children now work out of town, the grandma has to take care of six grandchildren on her own. Thankfully, city volunteers will accompany the family through this difficult time and provide further assistance if needed. Moving to Malaysia, the City Kuantan Liaison Office and the City Tamalo Liaison Office both recently held their Night of Great Love, which attracted a total of 1,000 participants. The event, which were set to promote Dai TV programs and Dai dramas, moved audience members, who all vowed to share what they learned with their family and friends. <laughs> The arrival of city volunteers Liu Jiyu and Jian Silu, whose life stories were made into dramas, as well as singer Yi Jieqi, marks the opening of the Night of Great Love here at Kuantan. Dai TV is different than other TV channels because it offers educational programs that have a positive message. Through watching the master's teachings, our minds become very peaceful and we do not think about what's troubling us. Moving to Temelor, local residents, young and old, arrived to take part in the night event. Among them, some are loyal Dai TV audience members, while others are first-timers. City volunteer Fu Huixian used to be a short-tempered person until she watched the Dai drama based on Sister Jian Silu's story. Soon after she began to rid herself of her bad temper, a positive change her husband can attest to. 
I saw that Sister Jian had habits quite similar to mine, yet she was able to become such a great person and give so selflessly, so I thought I can do it too. She is slowly getting rid of her bad temper and is becoming a more soft-spoken person. Thank you, Tsuji. My thought after watching the show is that I want to take what I have learned here back home and teach my children. After all, teaching kids require patience, time and love. In spreading truth, goodness and beauty, Dai TV aims to create a peaceful and harmonious society. In China, Sun Huiyin, a volunteer in Shenyang, Sinti, Liaoning province, established a monthly study group in hopes of spreading Tzu philosophy in her local community. Showing their support have been Tzu volunteers from Beijing and Tianjin who traveled 800 kilometers each month to share their expertise. As the event has attracted more and more participants over time, the director of Renzhen De Center also decided to provide their venue for the study sessions in the future. Here at Zhenyang City, Liaoning Province, city volunteers are holding their fifth study group at the Renzhen De Center. The director, who recognizes the value of city's work, offered her center as a venue for the monthly event and invited her staff to join as well. We think that the philosophy and actions of Tsuji are great and worth learning from. Last time we went to their study group, we thought the venue was too small. So whenever we don't have class, we provide our classrooms for Tsuji's use. Though having to travel 800 kilometers, Tsuji volunteers from Beijing and Tianjin nonetheless make the trip each month as a show of support for their fellow volunteers. I made a vow that I will give more and learn from city volunteers. I would like to do more charity work. I think if we gather 200,000 people, it won't just be a stream of purity, but an ocean. Sun Huiyin, who funded the study group, is grateful to everyone for making the study sessions possible. Let us hope that we can find a proper direction in our life, and at the same time, help others find their happiness as well. Through sharing their stories, city volunteers hope to inspire more to join the Buddhist NGO and make a difference. When Cyclone Nagas hit Myanmar in 2008, city volunteers from neighboring countries like Malaysia and Thailand arrived to help with the recovery effort. Later, several city liaison offices were established as local volunteers began to join city's ranks. One such volunteer was Shai Mitmin Tu, who is a city care recipient turned to Qing. Knowing his blessings, the young volunteer vows to follow city's footsteps to pay the love forward. After Tsuji officially hands over Myangon No. 1 High School to the Myanmar government, Tsuji volunteers get busy handing out snacks to guests. Tsuching, Shai Mit Min Du, stands out from the rest as he hurries to grab cartons from others to stack, or when bowing 90 degrees when giving out bread. Working in this heat, Shin Mit Min Du quickly works up a sweat. Next to him is his mother, who just wants to do more work like her son. As a single parent, his mother didn't have the means to support Shin Min Min Du and his grandmother. Thus, two years ago, Shin Min Min Du became a Tsuji care recipient. Tsuji provided him with tuition and tutoring fees, and in the past two years, volunteers have not only entered his house, but also his heart. Everyone has a bogus nice and a bogus stable, strong and separate. Master Zhen Yanxing's aphorisms have had a deep impact on Shin Min Min Du. Not only do they hang on the walls of his living room, but the Book of Wisdom is also present on his desk when he studies. When I saw those who were worse off than me, it really changed me. I know we are poor, but there are those out there who don't know when their next meal will be. So I'm very grateful Tsuji has helped me. Knowing he is blessed, Shin Min Min Du will also tutor children after school. He says he's only following in Tsuji's footsteps as they have taken care of him in the same way. He doesn't feel inferior to others because he has received assistance like some recipients we come across. He teaches the children to work hard like he does. When he has free time, Shin Mit Mindu will join volunteers on home visitations. 
Seeing the selfless dedication of Tsuji volunteers, he vows to walk the Tsuji path in the future. With the assistance of Tsuji, Shimit Mendu was able to concentrate on his studies and receive acceptance into college, which makes both his family and Tsuji volunteers proud. His mother does her part to help others by saving a handful of rice each day in her rice piggy bank. Shin Min Min Du is a seed of Tsuji, taking root and sprouting in Myanmar. By following the volunteer's footsteps and extending his spirit of great love, he shines bright. In Taiwan, the 25 graduating students of Xizan Elementary School in Taipei City are taking on a challenge where they will travel some 500 kilometers on their bicycles from the school to Cape Oran B as part of their graduation trip. It may sound easy, however many hurdles need to be conquered and the students have been training since winter vocation. With each practice, students come closer to perfection and their teacher also hopes that this journey will give them the strength and courage to face future difficulties. There is no time for fun and games, only students bring their A-game. An elementary school with only one class per grade, each year Xishan Elementary School graduates organizes a graduation trip which encompasses a self-challenge. This year, the entire class of 25 are traveling from Taipei to Cape Erluan B, some 500 kilometers on their bicycles. Bali. Today we are aiming for Bali. We have to at least cycle there and back. It's about 60 kilometers. If they don't have what it takes, how can they move mountains? We practice over and over and on steep slopes. When we are done with our training, we come for practice. It's just cycling, so I didn't think too much about it initially. I never imagined that some kids would fall off their bikes on their first go. I started to ask myself whether these kids could do it. But then I thought, if we don't try, we will never know. Stepping outside of the air-conditioned room, everyone is sweating bullets in no time. Even for the well-trained, falling off the bike is inevitable. But dry the tears, dust off the dirt and start over. It's painful, of course, but I have to carry on because I want to get home. In order to ready the team, strict discipline is required from everyone. My cycling skills are still not perfect, but our teacher always tells us how we can avoid getting thrown off the bike and how to change gears. My bike chain used to fall off a lot, but now almost never. Every training is a self-challenge. Every time there is improvement. It's a little exhausting. I didn't know how to ride a bike before but now I'm getting better by the day. I was concerned at first because my daughter is a city kid. She's always at home and doesn't get out a lot, but I was surprised to see that she was able to keep up with the others. The whole team cycled in an orderly and systematic fashion. The teacher has done a great job. A semester's physical training in addition to classes, the students are ready to step up their game this summer. However, this out-of-the-ordinary graduation trip comes with a lot more pressure attached, especially for their teacher. 
I hope they see this journey as a challenge, like conquering a mountain. I want them to see difficulties as opportunities and find ways to overcome their obstacles. This is really the most important purpose of this whole trip. In just a few months, these students will set off on their challenge. Once living the city life, these children not only have witnessed their own progress, but have found courage and endless possibilities. Back to Malaysia, students of the city senior high school in Tainan recently visited the Sungai Pulau Leproserium and a local education centre for Burmese refugees with Kuala Lumpur and Selangor City volunteers. Many of the students say through this visit, they realise how lucky they are and promise to help those in greater need when they return home. Giving seniors warm hugs and their blessings, students and teachers of Tainan Tsuji Senior High School in Taiwan are here at the Songhai Bulo Leprosarium in Malaysia. For years, Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Tsuji volunteers have been caring for the senior residents here. During their visits, students accompany and care for the seniors like their own grandparents. The grandpa had one of his legs amputated so he can only move around sitting in a chair. His hands don't have the strength to grab things. I feel really bad for him. Other than singing all songs, senior residents all happily share their stories. Many students were inspired to fulfill their filial duties. We sang and performed a sign language song for a senior and she was very moved. I would like to entertain my grandparents like this when I go back home. <laughs> Meanwhile, the students also visit an education center for Burmese refugees to teach children how to dance and make spinning tops. The crowded space inside the center has made these tiny students realize their blessings. When we walked into the small room, there were 70 to 80 students packed in it. In Taiwan, we always said that our classroom is very crowded, but compared to these children, all of us have enough personal space. Seeing the suffering of these children, the students of Tainan Tsuji Senior High School realize how fortunate they are and they promise to cherish their blessings from this moment on. In Taiwan, a city summer camp for elementary school students from Shenzhen and Taiwan kicked off on July 12, and the theme of the eight-day camp was focused on ecology and environment. The event gave these students hands-on experience in sorting recyclables and a message that they can spread once back home. I bought some fries and a cup of tea. Look, the clerk gives me a plastic bag to take away. How lovely. Is it necessary to take plastic bags provided by shops? Tsuji volunteers toss out this question to encourage students to think about the relationship between their daily life and the environment. Looking to enhance their environmental awareness, elementary students from China, Shenzhen, are on an exchange visit to Taiwan. During the eight-day summer camp, we try to teach our students the importance of environmental protection and our ecosystem. We hope that they will bring these ideas back home and spread them in their schools. The schools in Shenzhen have also started promoting environmental education. We hope to teach the younger generation important environmental knowledge. Through hands-on experience, the students can better understand how to practice recycling. Practicing recycling is a meaningful activity. It not only makes the earth much healthier, but also gives obsolete items a second lease on life. Avoiding plastic bags is a way to protect our environment. We shouldn't recklessly throw away plastic bags because they will cause environmental pollution. Now you all have your reusable chopsticks. Don't forget to use them during your stay in Taiwan, alright? A pair of chopsticks is not only a souvenir, but also a symbol of the beginning of the student's environmental mission. Recently, a city volunteer training seminar was held in Bantau, New Taipei City. As part of the training, volunteers took the trainees on a visit to a community recycling event. Spending the day sorting recyclables has helped the soon-to-be commissioners gain a better understanding of how to reduce, reuse and recycle. For example, if this battery corrodes and leaks, it will pollute one square meter of land. 
Thanks to these local recycling volunteers, the trainees now better understand the dangers of old batteries. Today, I have come to realize that a small battery can have a large environmental impact if just thrown away. If you take all the water I have used in this lifetime, and if you say today, I carelessly throw away a battery, will I have water to use in the next lifetime? Thinking like this, I am more aware of how scary cause and effect can be. Members of the Banchal District City Volunteer Training Seminar are here today to work with recycling volunteers to better understand how to store recyclables. Even those who have some experience in recycling find the time to be instructional. I actually have been recycling for two to three years, but it was only today that I learned the ten points of recycling. As a mnemonic, it helps us remember what recyclables go well quite easily. Through sorting, recyclables become gold. Conversely, without sorting, they are just garbage. So doing this work has a lot of meaning. Although in no time everyone is covered in sweat as they get down to work, there is a joy in their hearts as they are not only cleaning up garbage but purifying their minds. In sorting recyclables, I always used to be afraid of dirty things, but if our intent comes from our heart, that is to say, we first purify our hearts, then whether it is your hand or foot or clothing that touches the recyclables, it doesn't matter. You can just wash it off when you get home, but the mind remains untouched. In the act of recycling, one should strive to work on one's mind as well. So on the outside, we are recycling, but on the inside, we are actually purifying our hearts and minds. Thanks to the day's events, the trainees go home with a clear idea on how to store recyclables and purify their minds at the same time. Moving to Taipei, the Yang Ming Home for the Disabled came up with a screening index to prevent the physically and mentally handicapped from choking on their food. Let's take a look. To educate members of the public on how to better take care of people that are mentally challenged, the Yang Ming Home for the Disabled came up with the screening process. If we are not careful, our students may choke on their food. This is something we take very seriously in our organization because most of our students are mentally challenged. These students are not very good at distinguishing what is okay for them to eat and what is not. For mentally challenged people, most of them have difficulty swallowing their food. In the long term, they are more likely to lack nutrients, which may lead to osteoporosis. To prevent this from happening, staff members of Yang Ming Home for the Disabled came up with a screening process that can decrease the chance of students choking on their food. We have established a screening index for food that is okay for our students to eat, that which is hard for them to eat, and so on. The screening procedure is not only good for our students that are mentally challenged, but also for the general public. Stretching their arms and legs at the end of the seminar, the children show everyone an exercise to remind them to stay fit and healthy. We stay in Taiwan at the end of today's program. A group of teachers and students from Hong Kong's Pingshik Estate Catholic Primary School recently visited the Tsuji Nehu Recycling Station to learn about the organization's environmental work. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.